Welcome to the beginner video series for the GRE. In this video, we are covering the chapter geometry and in that the subtopic we are dealing with is circles. We know what a circle looks like, but let's try to define circle. We can say circle is a collection of all the points which are equidistant from a common point. That common point is called the center of the circle and the distance is called the radius. Now there are few fundamental formulas that we have to know for circles. One of them is to find the area of a circle. Another is to find the circumference of a circle. Area of a circle is pi r square. Circumference is 2 pi r. Now let's say I draw another radius r and this angle be theta. This length is called an arc. Now arc is a part of the circumference of a circle. Circumference is this boundary or the perimeter of a circle. Arc is a part of the circumference. The length of an arc is theta upon 360 times 2 pi r. Now how did we get here? Let's take the whole circle. If we take the whole circle the angle is 360 degrees. Okay, The entire angle is 360 degrees. The circle makes an angle 360 at the center. Now if the angle is 360 degrees, then the length of the boundary is 2 pi r, right, equal to its circumference. Now in place of 360 degrees, if the angle made is 1 degree, then the boundary is 2 pi r upon 360. Simple unitary method, we have divided 360 on both sides. Similarly, if we multiply theta on both sides, we will get 2 pi r upon 360 times theta. So if the angle is 360 at the center, then the boundary is 2 pi r. If the angle is 1 degree, the boundary or the arc is 2 pi r upon 360. If the angle made at the center is theta degrees, then the arc is 2 pi r upon 360 times theta, which is same as this. Now this region is called sector. Sector is a part of the area. Sector is a part of this whole area of the circle. Area of a sector is theta upon 360 times pi r square. We get this using the same method that we applied here. So if the total angle is 360 degrees, then the area is pi r square. If the angle is 1 degree, area is pi r square upon 360. If the angle is theta degrees, then the area is pi r square upon 360 times theta, Okay, which is same as this. So these are the four fundamental formulas that we have to know. Let's move ahead. The next concept is cyclic quadrilateral. Now we know what a quadrilateral is. It's a four sided figure. A cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose all the vertices lie on a circle. If all the vertices of a quadrilateral lie on a circle, then that quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral. Here ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. There is only one property of cyclic quadrilateral that we have to know. And that is sum of opposite angles is equal to 180 degrees. Here A and C are opposite angles. So sum of angle A and angle C should be equal to 180 degrees, which is also equal to angle B plus angle D because B and D are also opposite angles. So this is the only thing we have to know in a cyclic quadrilateral that sum of opposite angles is equal to 180 degrees. A and C are opposite angles, but what are A and B? These are called adjacent angles. Similarly, A and D are also adjacent angles. Let's move ahead to the next concept and that is angle on the opposite arc. Let me draw an arc. This is an arc. Let's say this arc makes angle theta at the center. Now the property is if an arc makes angle theta at the center, then anywhere on the opposite arc, 
the angle made is theta upon 2 this is the opposite arc if an arc makes angle theta at the center then anywhere on the opposite arc the angle made is theta upon 2 so this angle will be theta upon 2 this angle is theta upon 2 this angle is theta upon 2 again let me reiterate if an arc makes angle theta at the center then anywhere on the opposite arc the angle made is theta upon 2 chord angle in a semicircle now before discussing these things let's first find the difference between line and a line segment now line has no end points line extends infinitely okay line has no end points it can extend infinitely it never stops but line segment on the other hand has two fixed end points chord is a line segment whose end points lie on a circle chord is a line segment because it has two fixed end points and its end points lie on a circle this is also a chord because it's a line segment whose end points lie on a circle now let's say this is the center of the circle and this is a chord which passes through the center this chord is called the diameter diameter is the longest possible chord in a circle if we take this arc the lower arc the angle made at the center is 180 degrees now we know the property that if an arc makes certain angle at the center anywhere on the remaining arc the angle made would be half of it so this arc makes angle 180 at the center so anywhere on this opposite arc the angle made would be 180 upon 2 which is 90 this angle would be 90 this angle would be 90 hence we say angle in a semicircle is equal to 90 degrees let's move ahead the next concept is tangent now what's a tangent tangent is a line which touches the circle at only one point this is a tangent because it touches or intersects the circle at only one point there are few properties of tangent that, that we should know one of the properties is from any point outside a circle you can draw exactly two tangents to that particular circle from any point outside a circle you can draw exactly two tangents to a particular circle and those two will be equal in length from the point outside to the intersection point this length is equal to this length another property is that tangent and radius are always perpendicular tangent and radius always make 90 degrees tangent and radius are always perpendicular so we have discussed that tangent is a line which touches the circle at only one point and from a point outside you can draw exactly two tangents to a circle and those two will be equal in length the fourth property is tangent and radius are always perpendicular please make note of everything that we are discussing in this video unless you know everything in that case you don't have to write anything the next concept is distance covered in one rotation let's say this is a wheel whose radius is r it makes one rotation it gets to this point okay here rotation carries the same meaning as revolution in this context it is rotating one time or revolving one time what is the distance covered by this wheel in one rotation the distance covered by a wheel in one rotation is equal to its circumference so this distance covered is 2 pi r if r is the radius distance covered by any wheel in one rotation or revolution is equal to its circumference now i would want you to try this question you can pause the screen and try it i hope you have done so let's do it together we are told the distance covered by wheel A in 3 rotation is equal to distance covered by wheel B in 5 revolutions. We have to determine the ratio of their areas. There are two wheels A and B and we are told distance covered by this wheel in 3 revolutions 
is equal to distance covered by this wheel in 5 revolutions. Now what is the distance covered by wheel A in 1 revolution? Equal to its circumference. So 2 pi r is the distance covered by wheel A in 1 revolution if the radius is r a. Distance covered in 3 revolutions would be 3 times the circumference. Similarly for wheel B distance covered in 1 revolution would be 2 pi r b if r b is the radius. Distance covered in 5 revolutions would be 5 times the circumference. And we are told both these distances are equal. Now 2 pi 2 pi cancels out. We end up with r a upon r b is equal to 5 upon 3. Now this is the ratio of the red eye pure form of radius. Now we have got the ratio of the red eye, we have to find the ratio of their areas. Area of wheel A is pi r a square, wheel B is pi r b square, pi pi cancels out, you are left with 5 by 3 whole square because the ratio of red eye is 5 by 3. This gives us 25 upon 9 as our answer. With this, we have completed this video. I hope you liked it. Thank you.